I don't, okay? I think we'll um, keep things on now. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all to the joint alloy and video webinar. Today's webinar, we're focusing on adding the video, VIDYO video conferencing platform to your portfolio. During today's webinar, I'd just like to go over a few uh, housekeeping rules initially. So during the webinar, if you do have a question at all, at all, um, please do use the, uh, the chat service on the dashboard. Um, you should see a little chat pane on your GoWebinar uh, dashboard. Just shoot through your questions on there um, and we'll get them answered as quickly as possible. Now, at the end of the presentation, we will have some audio-based uh, Q&A. Um, during that session, what we'll do is I'll keep everybody muted. If you do have a question, please raise your hand. So under the um, under your attendee section, you can actually click on a little hand which raises your hand. What I can do then is unmute you and you can fire away questions. Okay, so the presenters for today's webinar, uh, Scott Young and myself. I'm the Product Development Manager at Alloy Computer Products. And we also have Chris Puxy, who's the Sales Engineer for the Australia, New Zealand and Pacific Island region from Video. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Okay. So today's agenda, what we'll be doing is going through a overview of the video company itself, um, the technologies that they use um, and also where they're going with their technologies. I will then run through a brief overview of the alloy and video relationship. Chris will then go through an overview of the video product and then finally at the end we will also talk about the requirements of becoming a video reseller. And then we will finish with the Q&A session. Okay, to kick things off, I'll hand over to Chris and he'll take you through an overview of the video company. Thanks, Chris. Hey. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. Now, video, who are we? What do we do? Okay, video as an organization, we're actually started in about 2005 by two gentlemen. One is Ofa Shapiro. Some of you may have heard of him in the industry. He actually created, um, with his team at Rad Vision, the video conferencing bridge for IP, for IP networks. That conferencing bridge and the technology behind that was licensed by Cisco, was licensed by the people at uh, Tanberg, Polycom, LifeSize, pretty much any vendor that is doing IP-based MCU video conferencing today. Now, he also started the company with another gentleman called Alex Alefrianides. And you may or may not have heard of Alex Alefrianides. He actually developed the Blu-ray DVD specification. So, as you can see, we have some pedigree amongst the uh, people who started the organization. Now, a couple of key things about our company. Probably the, the most interesting one is recently we were actually voted one of the top 10 tech companies proving that innovation is not dead. Now, we were voted amongst the likes of SpaceX, Tesla, Amazon, Google, and some other high-profile IT companies. So we do have some very, very uh, um, large respect within the market at the moment. Another curious one is we also have three Emmy Award winners on our, uh, on our staff, and those guys have won awards in uh, special effects. A um, couple more things. We have uh, a number of patents that uh, have been awarded around um, the Scalable Video Codec and our adaptive video layering, and it also shows that we're actually leading the market in the next generation of video conferencing, and I'll talk a bit more about our relationships with our partners a little later on. Now, video conferencing. You probably all use video conferencing in the past. 
traditionally video conferencing has been very expensive. It's been room based. People had to go to dedicated rooms to have their video conferencing. A required quality of service networks and what it left people with was having these little isolated islands of capability in office towers or in, office, in meeting rooms scattered throughout an organisation. It was inflexible, it was difficult to work with and required a lot of training on behalf of the users. What we've done as an organisation is we've literally taken consumer grade devices, built a software based video conferencing solution that enables your users and your customers' users to actually deliver video conferencing on consumer grade devices. So by that I'm talking mobile phones, I'm talking tablets, I'm talking desktops and laptops, as well as small to medium and larger room systems. What we can do is also deliver those across the networks that people are connected to. Traditionally, video conferencing has meant that uh, you needed a, a dedicated network with quality of service and a lot of bandwidth. Our adaptive video layering and our scalable video technology means that your customers' video conferences can actually happen across the internet. So over time, what you'll start seeing amongst larger organisations and even moving into smaller organisations if they're want, wanting the flexibility and the mobility of video conferencing. So we're moving to a paradigm where video conferencing is much like voice. People are going to be making video calls on the devices they're used to, on networks they're connected to and in locations where wherever they are. The uh, key differentiator between us and our competitors is the cost of video conferencing. Because we use consumer grade devices and we're a software based solution, what it means is that we can deliver a video conferencing solution very, very cheaply over the lifetime of the solution. So essentially what we've done is we've dragged the cost of a phone call down from dollars or minutes per minute down to the cost of a phone call. So we're looking at one to two to three cents per minute. And we can do that by using software based clients on, as I mentioned, consumer grade devices. Now how are we different? Obviously cost is important. Obviously device flexibility is important. And what we provide is a level of performance that's far beyond any of the video conferencing solutions you've seen in the past. And the beautiful thing is, because we work on any of these devices, anyone can join into a conference. And we can do that via a simple room link. Now, you're probably most of you will probably dealt with what we call legacy MCU-based video conferencing technology. Now, traditionally, as I mentioned, it was expensive. It required expensive hardware to sit in the middle of the conversation, especially in multi-party calls, to do transcoding. To actually take the video that's coming from an endpoint send that into an MCU, recomposite that information, send it out to an endpoint, and then decode it. It required a lot of CPU power at the endpoint. It required a lot of CPU power in the center of the conversation. It also allow, um, required uh, and introduced a lot of latency into a conversation. We're a little different in the sense that we switch video conversations. We switch video traffic much like data is switched on the internet. Now, as a, uh, as a solution, we also are future-proofed. MCU hardware is hardware. So all the codecs, all the uh, technology is actually built into physical silicon. Because we're a software-based solution, we have the ability to drop functionality in almost immediately or as it's developed or as it's, if it's a standard, as it's ratified. So what that means for us is we can move to the new generation of video codecs, H.265, HEVC, which you're going to see in the market very soon, but more importantly, VP9, which is Google's implementation of H.265, and we're working with them, and I'll speak about that a little later on. What that means is when these new standards are ratified, it becomes a software upgrade on our solution. So you may be hearing in the marketplace rumblings about 4K video conferencing. For us to develop or deliver 4K video conferencing into our solution, it was five lines of code in our product. Our competitors, if they want to deliver 4K, they will require to 
to replace the, C, the MCU in the customer's premises. Likewise, if the customer wants to implement H.265, they'll need to replace the MCU as well. Now, our partners. Over the past few years, we've actually developed quite a strong portfolio of partners. Um, some of you may uh, have actually used a, one of these new Nintendo Wii U tablet devices. They actually have a chat functionality built in. It's our actual technology that is driving that chat and that video functionality in that product. Philips have actually introduced video conferencing at the bedside in many hospitals and they've embedded our technology into the, the transportable cart that they use in many of the major hospitals in the US. Probably our key partner at the moment and the one you might have heard most, most, most uh, marketing and information in the press about recently is our partnership with Google. Google a number of years ago came to us to actually develop the, the video component of the Hangouts product. They saw us as the next generation video conferencing and they could see that our product could scale to fit their requirements. What we've done with the relationship over the past few months is to actually work with them to deliver WebRTC. Many of you will have heard of WebRTC in the market. It's going to be a major, major game changer when it comes to video conferencing. WebRTC is all about bringing video conferencing to the web browser. But more importantly, doing it without the requirement for the user to install any software at the desktop. So what's happening when Google Chrome 11 is released, hopefully by the end of this year? It will mean that we can send a link out to a user. Our plugins, as well as Google Hangouts plugins, are built into the Chrome browser, as well as uh, Firefox and Mozilla and Safari on a Mac. And that'll mean a user will be able to join into a conference without the need to download any software. Perfect for SOE environment, perfect for those that are having just one or two conferences on a very regular basis, but also very handy for organizations that are potentially moving to video in the contact center. What it means is a user experience that is zero touch for a customer. Moving forward, we actually have been in the market for quite a long period of time. We've been, actually been in Australia for about four years. Globally, we've been operating and selling our products for about seven years. What we've managed to do is develop some very, very strong brands or work with some very, very strong customers across a number of different verticals. So as well as just delivering into um, verticals like healthcare and education, we've moved very heavily into government, especially in the US. We have some key customers, especially in the engineering and research um, space. You might have heard of CERN, the Big Hadron Collider people in, uh, in Europe. They use our technology on a day-to-day -day basis and have anywhere up to three to 4,000 endpoints connected into anywhere up to 600 conferences a day. Now, the beautiful thing about the sky, um, scale and size of their solution is not many customers or not many uh, of our competitive partners are able to say they can have such large conferences. The largest conference they've had is of 880 people when they launched the Boson Higgs particle to the rest of the world. Now, interestingly enough, we have a solution that will connect into legacy video conferencing um, services and about two-thirds of those CERN users are connected to the video environment using legacy devices. Now, in the second part of the uh, presentation, I'll actually run you through our technology. I'll run you through how it all hangs together, uh, how we're a little different in terms of the way we deliver video conferencing, and we'll be able to give you a complete understanding of the full product set. I'll just quickly hand it back to, uh, to Scotty to explain our relationship. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay, guys. Now I'm just going to run through quickly the relationship between Alloy and Video. Alloy has been a certified video distributor since February 2011. All our all support, all technical support is done by Alloy. Alloy has certified technicians that have made the trip over to New Jersey in the in the US and we're SAT training 
um, and we've passed all the exams that we need to to become certified video engineers. What we've also done is we've also completed the trainer trainer courses in the US. What that means is that we can actually deliver video training to you guys, to the resellers, and certify you guys as video technicians as well. Alloy also offers pre and post sales consultation services. So if you do have an upcoming project, we are happy to discuss the project with you. We're happy to give you ideas and also work out what products you need to fulfill the requirements of those customers. What we can also do is we also offer installation services. So if you do have requirements for customers and you initially don't know the video product very well, we can actually configure the product for you. We can also help you install the product into your customers' premises. So Alloy is here to help you guys push the video product and get it installed and operating into your customers' environments as quickly and smoothly as possible. Okay, that was quick and easy for me. Now we're back to Chris with an overview of the video product. Excellent. Thanks, Scotty. Uh, much appreciated. Yeah, we've uh, we've recently cemented the relationship with Alloy. Alloy are working very, very hard to uh, bring on resellers like yourselves to deliver our solution. You are going to start seeing a lot more of us in the marketplace. Uh, we are introducing an extremely disruptive technology um, to the market. And you'll find that uh, a lot of customers are looking at these next generation video conferencing products to actually provide some mobility around their, uh, around their either their existing video conferencing resources or they want to add another facet to the business that they are working in. Now, in terms of our technology, I explained a little earlier where we're not a transcoding solution, we're a switching solution. What you'll find in our existing uh, video conferencing environments that you may have used in the past, that transcoding MCU is a very expensive piece of equipment. It uh, is very, very limited in its capability in terms of the amount of ports that can connect into it. It also means that as a longer term investment, customers are paying quite a lot of money to maintain a piece of hardware. Now, video is a software based solution end to end. We do deliver on uh, server hardware, but we actually deliver all our um, solution on consumer grade equipment. So what that means is it's very, very cost efficient to install, but more importantly, over the longer lifespan of the actual product. Number one, obviously we're more upgradable and more easily upgradable because we are software, but the maintenance cost and the longer term investment requirement is considerably less. And to give you some rough, rough budgetary uh, or rough figures, we're about the tenth of the cost of a Cisco solution over a five year life cycle. We're about a seventh of the cost of an equivalent Polycom solution. And we're about a fifth of the cost of a, a life size solution. What we also are is a lot more flexible. Now, by using the video router technology, as I mentioned, we're intelligently switching our video streams between endpoints. So what that means is we don't require the computationally expensive processing power in the middle of our conversation. What it also means, we don't do transcoding. We don't require the immense CPU requirement to do that transcode. Now, what we also don't introduce into the conversation is latency. So latency in a video conferencing environment is actually quite a big killer. Now you'll see on this little diagram here where in a traditional endpoint coding where which we do in a video environment, we're only introducing about 180 milliseconds. The network, depending on where our, um, our routers are located, will introduce about another 70 milliseconds. And then our video router introduces about 10 milliseconds to perform 
it's scaling and it's switching. Now, when you look at the uh, latency introduced by a legacy endpoint, as well as the MP MCU in a legacy conversation, as you can see, that latency moves past that magical 300 millisecond um, mark. And I don't know whether you've ever been on a Skype conversation before, or maybe even a uh, video call with a uh, with another um, legacy MCU-based system. You will notice that uh, that latency in the conversation. Now, what we find is our infrastructure, regardless of where it's located on the planet, will be able to cope with the tyranny of distance because we're not introducing that latency. Now, the other key uh, concept and, and where a lot of our patents reside and the annex additions we've made to the H.264 protocols are around scaling. So conventional H.264 AVC um, conversations uh, frame after frame after frame after frame. Now, due, if there's any issues due to network problems, so anywhere up to 3% packet loss in a, in a legacy H.264 AVC conversation, if you lose packets, you get pixelization. And I think you can see that in that image on the right. In our scalable video coding, what we do is we take frames, we actually introduce additional layers in our conversation, and that's where our, our um, patents lie in the, in the interpolation of frames. And what we can do by introducing frames, we can actually use the available bandwidth, but if we lose frames, there is no impact to the end user experience. We maintain the fidelity of the conversation for the end user. Now, the scalable video coding allows us to cope with different bandwidth availability based on device. Now, I mentioned that we have an adaptive video layering capability. What that means is each of our endpoints is actually providing a series of um, information back to the video router in our conversation. It's telling the router what my screen size is, what my camera is capable of delivering, how much CPU I have available, and more importantly, how much, how much bandwidth we have available. Now, what we do is we scale the amount of frames we send based on the bandwidth available. So on a low bandwidth connection, we send our base layer. It's enough to give us high quality video on a, on a low resolution device. As we increase the bandwidth, we can increase more frames and more layers into our conversation. Now, if you think about it, in a, in a corporate world, you're going to have someone sitting in a, in a uh, dedicated video conference room. They might be doing 1080p at 30 frames a second from their video camera and the endpoint codec. There is no point sending a 1080p 30 frames a second conversation to a mobile phone because A, they don't have the bandwidth, especially if they're on 3G, and they don't have the screen resolution to display a 1080p conversation. So what our video router does in the middle of the in the middle of the um, the endpoint is actually scale that video down to a resolution and a frame rate that's appropriate for the device based on the conditions at the time. Now we can dynamically adapt throughout the conversation, and we do that multiple times a second for every endpoint. So effectively, we're str we're switching, we're scaling and when manipulating the individual video streams from each endpoint to suit the far end endpoint that is receiving the video. It's very, very clever technology and I think you'll be able to understand it. It's revolutionary. Now, a video router box is like the engine to our solution. It sits in the middle of our conversation, as I mentioned. It can handle up to 100 individual video endpoints. And we license our technology based on lines. So similar to a, a legacy MCU-based world where they work in the idea of ports, every individual port is an individual connection. We call our, our port lines, and each individual client that comes into a conversation will consume a line. Now, the very clever part of our technology is because we're only routing at the core of the conversation, we can actually rack and stack these video routers to increase the scale of the solution. 
So in a situation where you want to have more than 100 people into a, a multitude of conversations in your environment, we can introduce a second, a third, a fourth, and a fifth router. We can scale up to as many routers as the customer needs lines or endpoints connected into multiple conferences. So that whole idea of a limitation on a port, on the amount of ports that an MCU can handle, is completely out the window. Now the nice thing about our video routers is we can actually put them in points of presence or locate them where there are choice there are choke points on a WAN network. So we can also actually deploy them on a follow the sun model where customers can have routers um, right across somewhere like Australia, but if they're a global organization, they can place these routers in say the US, in a US time zone, or maybe in um, Europe in an EMEA time zone. Now, the Routers themselves are actually controlled by our video portal. Now, a video portal is, if you like, the brains behind our solution. This is where we apply all our licensing. This is where all of our users will connect in and actually log in and to manage their video conferences. It's where we can actually manage the infrastructure and where we configure the various components in the video conference environment. It's also where end users will actually download their software for the video web or the video desktop. Now, the nice thing is this video portal, because we are software, is very easily customizable. So if you have a customer that would like to brand the technology, put their own logo or insignia on it, they are able to do this um, through the user interface. Now, the nice thing about our line model is that we can apply our line to the video portal. And those lines can be shared across as many routers as there are in the organization. So you don't need to double up or triple up on the cost of um, ports and MCU hardware in a conversation like you would do in legacy world. So what that means is you have a flexibility to design your video conferencing environment to suit users' needs, but more importantly, to suit the network and the available bandwidth. And when we go and speak to customers, it's a conversation we have and we develop use cases and understand their requirements and where they want to do their video conferences from. As I mentioned previously, we're now seeing most conferences done on mobile device or desktop devices. It requires a lot of different understanding from um, MCU world as to the location and planning of where we put these video routers and portals. Now I mentioned we switch video conversations. We do actually do some transcoding. Now, we recognize that many customers have made significant investments in their legacy video conferencing architecture. So what we provide is our video gateway. Now, our video gateway allows us to transcode between legacy H.263, H.264 ABC, H.264 SBC, mode one incarnation, also SIP, and we can also negotiate all the relevant uh, video and audio protocols underneath, underneath those uh, legacy standards. So what this allows us to do is actually connect a video environment into any of those legacy video conferencing assets. So you may have customers out in the market that have a boardroom solution, but want to extend that solution out to mobile devices and out to their people in the field maybe even out to branch offices. They don't want to invest in expensive um, hardware or even expensive um, bridging or gateway technologies to connect mobile applications. We can deliver through the video gateway a scalable legacy environment that means that the legacy environment is now not limited by the capacity of their existing MCU. So for a lot of users and a lot of customers, you'll find that they've, they've invested, as I said, quite a lot of money. They're paying significant amounts of money in terms of maintenance. They don't want to make a further significant investment to, to mobile enable their devices with the current vendor. In a lot of instances, they can't actually deliver over 3G and 4G mobile networks. So we're offering a solution with the video gateway to provide the best of both worlds. 
they get the, the high functionality and the flexibility of the video platform, as well as they maintain the assets that they have. Now, as well as being able to connect into legacy systems, we can actually do recording of conferences. So with our video replay box, again, just a single one new pizza box server, we can actually record the conferences, and whether that be in standard definition, high definition, or full HD, whether it be content only, participant only, or participant and content, we can use and store, we can record and store any video conferencing, obviously dictated by the user or the moderator of the conference, and host that on our video replay box. We can also push those recordings off to a connected SAN or NAS. And with the same box, we can actually webcast up to 300 users out of the same um, infrastructure. Now, this is a, a very, very reasonably priced solution, especially in the education market or the training sector, to provide a means by which content can be generated and then hosted and delivered out to, uh, de delivered out to students or members of an organization. So those are the four key components that make up our solution. Very simple, very easy to deploy, very, very easily easy to be trained on, but more importantly, it's an actually a very, very easy solution to explain to your customers. You don't have to talk about having multiple gateways, having gatekeepers, trying to traverse networks. Our solution was designed to work across the internet and to be designed to connect in devices that users, that users are familiar with. So probably the key, as I mentioned, a lot of organizations are moving to a mobile platform these days. They want to be able to do their video conferences wherever they are. They want to be able to do them on the devices they're familiar with. Most people these days have a smartphone, whether it be Android, whether it be iOS, whether it be a Windows phone. They're using a tablet, whether it be an Android or an iOS tablet. It, these tools have become part of part and parcel of day-to-day -day life. Customers are wanting to use these tools to do video conferencing. They've used the phone. The phone gets them only so far down the, down the way. But most people will discover that the, having someone face-to-face -face in a conversation means you can be much more effective in your communication. Now, the easiest way to be more effective in your communication is to have these conversations on a device that's immediately available. And mobile presents the best solution for that. Now, the, most, the, most, uh, the best thing about our mobile solution is we use the key features that are available on the mobile platform that mobile users are familiar with. Things like double tap, things like being able to stretch and pinch to zoom on uh, individual users and shared content. The ability to change the, the format of the people on the screen. And the ability to do the common things like your camera control. So you can actually hide your video if you don't want to be seen. Now, we also um, obviously deliver on desktop devices. These days, people are wanting to have video conferences from their desktop. They don't want to have to go to a dedicated room. To give you an, hour, an idea, our organization, we use our technology internally, obviously. We will have conferences with our developers where everyone will be in the same room, they'll be all sitting in their own cubicles, but everyone will be actually joining into our conferences from their own individual desktop. So we can have anywhere up to 30 to 40 to 50 developers all sitting in the same office, all across from the other side of their, each other's cubicle, all with headsets on in a conference. It's actually quite effective and uh, it's amazing to watch them actually work, especially when they're sharing content amongst each other and sharing and collaborating, collaborating ideas not just with the people in their own office, but people and our staff that are located globally. The video desktop is able to be delivered on your traditional desktops. So the video um, Linux desktops, our traditional Windows flavors, so Windows XP and above, and also Mac. Now, what we have in our um, Windows product is the ability to plug in our desktop media player. What that does is replace the camera and replace the microphone with a media player. It means you can actually play um, movies 
as shared content through the video conversation. So if you have any customers that want to play movies, maybe want to share a training session or a pre-canned uh, video for training, they're able to bring that into the uh, video call as, it was, as if it was just another party joining into the conversation. Now, I mentioned WebRTC before. I mentioned the idea of being able to deliver an in-browser video conferencing experience. Over the past three months, we delivered Video Web, which currently is a browser plugin requirement across all the browser platforms. But as I said, once WebRTC gets launched, Google Chrome 11 gets launched, you'll actually be able to join into a conference, as I mentioned earlier, without the need to introduce a, uh, any sort of plugin or any client download. Now, Video Slate. A lot of people are actually sharing or managing content on laptop and, or on um, tablet devices. People usually want to share content from tablet devices into conferences. So what we've provided is video slate to enable this to happen. So any document, any, uh, any piece of uh, spreadsheet, maybe a PowerPoint presentation, if that's sitting on your, uh, on your tablet, you're able to take that content, join into the uh, video call and share that content from video slate as shared content into the conference. Now the beauty of this product is it is another person is sharing content of perhaps a room system or maybe even a desktop, that content will be pushed to the video slate. Now any user who has slate running in the conference is able to grab that content, is able to annotate and push their annotations back into the conference. That video slate can also be used as a whiteboard. So traditionally people have tried to use MS Paint or something like that connected on a laptop. Hey, we use the traditional gestures to be able to draw and scribble on a, doc, on, a, on a document or just a, uh, a blank piece of paper and share those, uh, share those thoughts and those um, jotting down into, uh, into the video call. Now the way we, learn, way we work, because we don't have to uh, reserve ports and we don't need to reserve resources on a traditional conference bridge, we use this concept called a virtual meeting room. Every user in the video environment has their own virtual meeting room. Think of it like their own personal conference bridge. Now, that user is able to invite as many people into their call as there are lines available in the system. What that means is we don't require the traditional scheduling tools to actually host a video conference. What it also means is we can use the tools that the company is already using to manage their infrastructure or to reserve physical room resources. So what we have is the Outlook tool, Outlook plugin, that adds a little icon to the toolbar where a user can click that button, generate a, uh, a, a meeting invite that populates out the relevant room link information as well as the ability as information for users to connect in from say a legacy environment or dial in via voice. Put, people can put the time and the invitees in and just send it out. There's no need to retrain users in how to send out a, uh, how to set up a conference or how to schedule a conference. It's using a technology that, again, people are familiar with. By using the room link, we've actually tried to make the capability of joining a conference really, really easy. Any user that clicks on our room link, whether it's delivered up via SMS, delivered up via chat, delivered up via a meeting invite, just clicks on that link, they download our clients from either our, our uh, video portal or if they're getting the video mobile clients to their iOS and Android devices from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. Now by using that link, it means that you have the flexibility of being able to bring users in from any device with the one link. There's no need to actually ensure that the other person has the capability to deliver solutions. Now we recognise that uh, there are many UC platforms out on the market that we need to integrate to provide uh, presence and that kind of capability. The key one we're seeing in the market at the moment is Link. And large organisations are moving onto a Link 2013 platform. 
we've developed a plugin to provide and replace the video capability of the link, uh, link product. If you've seen the link product working, it's somewhat limited in the capability in terms of its video. If you've ever seen the screen sharing or content sharing happening, uh, good luck if you've got to can actually share the content, especially if you're on a low bandwidth connection. By introducing our video plugin for Link, you're actually bringing the video experience to the end user's desktop using a traditional UC user interface. We also provide similar plugins for IBM Same, Lotus Note Same Time and Adobe Connect, although we don't see much of them in this market. Now, while whilst we are seeing a movement to these mobile devices, we also acknowledge that there is still a requirement for dedicated room systems. Now, again, we've developed developed our room systems on commodity hardware. What that means is we can actually put comprehensive and um, full feature set dedicated endpoint codecs into dedicated rooms at a very, very reasonable cost. Now we have at our low end, we have our video room HD40. It's a, a little um, Intel NUC based form factor next to unit of computing. It's designed to sit under uh, or behind a, say, a TFT stream in a boardroom. Um, with that guy, we can actually use just commodity grade USB headsets, uh, USB microphones, and USB speakers. So a very, very low price point for that small meeting room. Now, once we start moving up into some of the larger conference rooms, into uh, a sort of a 8 to 10 to maybe 14 size conference room, we move into our HD100. Now, our HD100 um, can take both a USB or a DVI-based hand-tilt zoom camera, has an external larger conference mic that can handle a larger room, but uh, can also take an external screen share. So what we can do is plug any external device that presents on HDMI and, or DVI and bring that into the conference. So in a, for instance, in a medical application, we can actually plug things like medical diagnostic equipment in and share that diagnostic equipment um, image into the video call. Now we then move up into our, our full feature set, larger room system, which is for the larger conference or larger boardroom, or maybe there's a requirement to have more than just the standard uh, nine or 16 participants on the screen. Our, our HD230 will also enable us to do uh, full 1080p at 30 frames a second, but and will also give us the uh, flexibility of doing up to 32 participants on the screen. Now, in terms of our cameras and audio devices, again, we use commodity items. We, we don't see the need to actually um, pay large amounts of money for dedicated branded equipment. What that means to your customers is what they used to see as a significant investment to their business, we can actually bring down to an extraordinarily reasonable price point. As I mentioned, our video room HD40 is actually seeing quite a lot of applications, especially in the medical field. The likes of Rubbermaid over in the US have embedded our technology into their mobile carts that enables them to do bedside video conferencing to improve the quality of care for their patients. Now, we also have seen um, in some instances uh, these HD room systems actually being scattered in the field at remote locations in environments where a customer needs a rugged eye solution for video conference. To give you an idea, our friends at uh, CERN who have their nice big Hadron Collider have a series of video room HD40 scattered around the collider that are permanently on, permanently connected to the control room that any person in an emergency can run up to one of these uh, endpoints, wave their arms in front of the actual uh, video room and the camera and get the attention of the operator in the control room for the, the collider. Uh, we're just hoping that hopefully there's not a, a catastrophic accident whereby the person can't actually get to the conference endpoint for whatever reason. 
Now, as I mentioned, our HD230 is in a, just a small form factor PC. It's the kind of thing that we could actually stick in a cupboard or maybe um, hidden away in a cabinet in a conference room. Now, this guy works with the Sony Pantilt Zoom cameras to produce an extraordinarily high quality full HD image. And the nice thing about this guy is if you're working with a very long conference room, the, the Sony camera is able to get quite uh, very, very good depth in those larger, larger rooms. Now, all of our room systems are able to be controlled by the video remote application that sits on an Android or a iOS tablet. So all those traditional room controls in terms of inviting participants, being able to mute the various parties in the conference, uh, being able to hide their cameras, even using the pound tilt zoom functionality can all be driven by the video remote application. So <clears throat> again, using commodity software to actually deliver a, uh, a very simple, elegant solution to your customers. Now we also acknowledge that in a lot of larger room environments, some of these customers may use things like AMX and Crestron to control blinds, to control lighting, to control projector screens and those kind of things. So as part of our solution, we actually provide plugins for AMX and Crestron to, to enable the control of our video room systems. Now usually we find that our partners that are familiar with AMX and Crestron find the integration of our video room systems very, very, very easy. And we also provide full functionality that you would normally expect out of, out of a room control from one of those uh, traditional lectin-based uh, based, uh, um, interfaces. Now probably the flagship uh, video panorama um, solution for our room system is our video panorama system. Many of you have probably seen the, the old Cisco telepresence solutions. Um, well, they're, still, they're not really old, they're still available at the moment. They can only handle three screens with up to six participants across the three screens. The price of those solutions is in the six figures, in the, in the low to mid six figures to actually get one of these solutions delivered. Our video panorama solution is actually capable of delivering up to six screens out of the one endpoint codec. On those six screens, we can actually have anywhere up to 16 people per screen. So in a large video conference environment, that means anywhere up to 95 people plus, plus self-view on the one endpoint. What we can also do is display multiple pages of content from multiple different people sharing content into the conference. Now, as a moderator or administrator of the panorama system, you're actually able to control which screen you want to see participants, which screen you want to see content, or which screens you want to see participants and content. The flexibility is there through our remote application to actually manage and handle and display the screens as per customer requirements. The one thing we love about this solution is it works out about 5K per screen to actually deliver the panorama solution. So if you've got any larger boardroom opportunities, they're looking at the panorama, their Cisco telepresence solution, what you will find for the cost of one telepresence endpoint in Cisco world, you'll actually be able to buy a fully featured video solution with quite a number of lines, including video router, video portal, video gateway, video replay, and a panorama system with six screens and a number of endpoints for the price of one Cisco telepresence endpoint solution. So this gives you an idea, especially in the larger environments, especially in the corporate space, space where we're driving the cost of video conferencing down to the cost of voice or close to the cost of a voice conversation. Now as you have seen, we have a pretty compre comprehensive product portfolio. We're actually able to pretty much cover all the different uh, endpoints that your customer will ever want to deal with. What we're able to deliver is also a distributed solution. So you'll see in this diagram here where as well as working in the cloud in the center of that conversation, regardless of whether you're delivering our solution on a physical video hardware or in a virtual environment, we can deliver our solution and our components in virtual VMware infrastructure. We can also 
locate our equipment on premises. Or you can actually have a blended environment. So if we look at the right, left hand side of that slide, you can see where we have an environment or a head office where we have a video router deployed. We also have an individual video replay. We have our endpoints connected into that solution. But what we also have is a customer with legacy equipment connecting via a video gateway into the video router. Now, as you can see on the environment on the right, which may be potentially a branch office or maybe a site that's located in an in a overseas territory, we can have a virtual instance of that same video router, a virtual instance of that same video gateway to connect in those far end endpoints and legacy video conferencing assets. What we also do offer is our video way service. This is an opportunity for your customers to actually kick the tires with the video product. So if they've heard of our technology, you've actually gone and spoken to them. You want to give them, say, a quick trial, five-day trial. They might want to connect a couple of uh, video endpoints in with their legacy video conferencing environment. We offer that as a way by which they can actually play with the technology. Okay. Now, they will have to register their details in that environment. Okay. What we also will do is get recognition that they've registered those opportunities. So if you are talking to people about video, do speak to the guys at Alloy. Tell them you've actually had the conversations with your resellers. Tell them you want to do a quick demonstration and want to have a play on our technology. Now what we can do is direct them towards Video Way as a means by which Alloy can, and you guys can work with your, your potential opportunities to actually play with the solution. Alloy, Alloy will actually help you and hold your hands along the way for demonstration and that kind of thing. Now, the, probably the key to our technology is we're a software-based solution. We don't require expensive hardware. What that means is we've developed a set of APIs around our product where in larger implementations, your customers can take our technology, develop applications and embed our technology into their workflows, into their applications, into their day-to-day -day business. It's something you guys can do with yourself with your own organization. I don't know if you've done video conferencing in the past, but what you'll find is video conferencing is a more effective means of communication. As part of the opportunity to come on as a video reseller, we actually request that you buy a demo system. We suggest you use that demo system internally in your organization to deliver your day-to-day -day sales process, to connect with your customers, to bring your people and your customers close together using video in your day-to-day -day sales process. Now guys, thanks for taking the time to listen to what I had to say and introduce our video platform and our video architecture. I'm sure you'll see it's actually a very simple architecture. There's nothing complex about it. I think Scotty and uh, the guys at Alloy will testify to very easy solution to install and support. And it's one of those solutions that ongoing, you're going to see video conferencing becoming one of those big industry booms in the market. We're introducing a disruptive technology here. We're giving you the opportunity to, if you like, get on the ground floor of the next generation of video conferencing. As soon as WebRTC is launched, as soon as video, um, H.265, as soon as VP9 are launched, what you're going to find is the legacy MCU-based MCU players, equipment, will immediately be out of date, will be redundant. Those providers will be asking their customers to replace their MCU, to replace that piece, expensive piece of equipment in the middle of their conversation. Video is an opportunity for you guys to be actually able to sell the next generation of video conferencing technology to your customers. Believe me, we are the people that are leading the charge into the H.265 world. We will be leading the charge into the 4K video conferencing world. The other guys are about two to three years behind us in terms of their development cycle. You'll see Google marketing a lot around Hangouts. Hangouts, Hangouts is a disruptive technology that's designed to be free for the lower end of the market and the consumer market. It's designed to remove the likes of Polycom and LifeSize from the market and also low-end Cisco um, business from the market. What it also enables us to do is capture that market segment where there is serious limitations in the Google Hangouts products. 
where your customers want enterprise grade features. They want to integrate video conferencing into their backend infrastructure for things like LMAP, for things like SSL, for things like internal administration and management and things like content sharing. So what we see is Hangouts be an express version of our product. We have worked with them to develop the, um, the Hangouts experience. We will be working closely with them moving forward. But what we are going to see is a wholesale shift to switching based video conferencing architecture. We're going to see a wholesale shift to the H265 protocol. What we are going to see is a massive shift towards Google and towards our technology. And we're affording you guys the opportunity of bringing, coming on board and being part of that shift in video conferencing. Thanks guys, thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them after um, Scott's, uh, Scott's told what we need to do to bring you guys on board. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. All right, guys, we'll quickly just finish off with the requirements um, of becoming a video reseller. Some of the major um, things to think about here is that the video channel is a closed channel. We only sell video to resellers that are certified video resellers. Not any reseller can come on board there are requirements that they must meet. One of those requirements is for the video reseller to attend the video technical training courses. The course is a three-day course um, and it's held normally in either Sydney or Melbourne but can also be organised to be held in other states as well. As well as the technical training, we also require at least one of the personnel to complete the online sales training. Now, on video's website, they have a sales course, which is a three-stage course, which is required to be completed as well. Um, now, also, as Chris mentioned before, there is also a requirement to purchase the demo equipment. The demo equipment is for your use and for your um, for the ability for you to demonstrate the video product to your potential customers. Now if you don't have the bandwidth or you want to do a demo that is that involves equipment that you don't have, then Alloy is also more than happy to use our video infrastructure to complete those demonstrations. Alloy have portals, gateways, replay devices in data centers that we are happy to utilize to make sure that we have um, or we give the best demonstration to our potential customers. Another requirement from our resellers is to make sure that you guys obviously push the video product, but also list it on your website and promote the video product on your website. That's really all there is to it. There's only a few things that are required, technical training, sales training, and the purchase of the demo equipment. Okay guys, that just about completes the webinar for today. What we'll do now is open up the um, I rub the mic for any of you guys that have any questions in regards to the video product or in regards to becoming a video reseller. What I'll do, if you do have any questions, please raise your hand um, and I'll unmute you and um, we can answer the questions for you. No questions at this point. A couple of questions that I'll just run through quickly from my Here we have. Okay, we have uh, Mark. Okay, Mark. Okay, Mark. Uh, just one question. Um, can you actually um, resell the product from a data center? Um, is there any um, uh, multi-tenant or um, billing available? Uh, 
Okay. Um, you go, Chris. Fire away. I'll, I'll answer that one. Um, yep. We do offer a, a CSP-based uh, cloud solution. Um, however, it's, it's on an application-only um, um, discussion. It's something that um, we would actually sit down and work with you um, if you're looking at that kind of thing. And it's also something we just don't offer out to anyone. Um, the ability is there to tenants, yes, um, but we only release our tenant licensing in a controlled manner. Um, it opens us up to some very nasty things otherwise. So um, if uh, the hosting conversation is something that we need to have offline um, at a different time, so it is possible there. Yep, that's fine, thanks. Um, I notice here we also have some questions that have come through on chat. Um, now, one is, at what point is the video router required if you have a mix of mobile, room, and desktop devices? In our video call, the video router is required in every conversation. It's that router that's actually providing the adaptability and the scaling on the network connection and of the video streams between the endpoints. Now, the nice thing about that router is there's some clever technology that sits in the background that allows us to provide what we call our video cloud. It allows us to distribute the actual resources that are provided by the router. But also what it means is between sites and enables us to aggregate bandwidth between video streams. So by having the router in the middle of the conversation, we're actually able to control traffic and control video conference traffic on the network. So to answer your question, regardless of what sort of device is actually in um, connecting into a video call, we will always have the video router in the solution to provide that adapting and that scalability of the video call. Um, there's another question here about um, NFR products. Um, we actually, as, as um, Scotty mentioned, we do have the uh, demo kit that's available for you guys to purchase. Um, now, the idea of you guys purchasing the demo kit, as I mentioned earlier, is as well as having demonstration capability, it also provides you guys a tool with which you can communicate with your customers. So in answer to, we don't provide NFR first day. All of our client software is free. We do provide seriously discounted pricing off RRP for any demo equipment that you want to uh, play with. Now, if there's a situation where you would like to do a trial in your customers, as uh, Scotty has mentioned, Alloy have the infrastructure with which you can do that. Should the customer have um, sort of more demanding issues let's, or demanding requirements in terms of a proof of concept, that kind of thing, we can offer up hardware which we can put on, on site for a short period of time um, and then uh, they can do their testing on site or on premise. Now, one thing we find, once users or connect into a video conference for the first time, the user experience is far superior than anything they've ever had in the past, especially on, on these mobile devices and desktop devices. What we generally will find is a proof of concept in a user in a customer site only needs to be once two weeks, simply for the fact that the initial user experience they have is far superior to anything they've had in the past. We also usually find that customer, you'll peak the customer's interest almost immediately with the technology, especially if they're comparing apples with apples. So pretty much the need for um, NFR um, um, equipment is probably possibly moot simply for the fact that we'll give you a discount, we can offer you heavily discounted uh, demo equipment, plus all our soft clients are free. Now, um, now, uh, can we purchase in Australia and deliver or distribute, distribute to other countries without any licensing challenge? We are a global organisation. All our licensing across the globe is entirely the same. There are no product differences between any of the territories in the, uh, around the world. We do have some uh, issues in places like Japan and Russia, which won't affect us in terms of homologation of some of our hardware devices. But if you're looking at outside opportunities or opportunities outside of Australia, um, obviously we'll discuss those kinds of things with the guys at Alloy.
Um, but any solution that Alloy or yourself or myself spec with you will be valid regardless of which territory you're trying to sell into. Now, any more questions from the floor? Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. To um, hearing from you all a bit later on. Thank you very much, guys.